Some emergencies are more likely to be embarrassing than fatal. At times like these, the only thing that can help save face is a sense of humor. As 22-year-old Eric Lundy of Union College in Lincoln, Nebraska found out while working with our professor Jim McClelland on April 16, 1992. Daniel, we need to sprinkle this in very gently. Two of my students, Dan Potter and Eric Lundy, wanted to make masks of themselves. I guess for posterity. And so I said, well, I've done this many times before. Uh, sure, I'll help you with it. Let me check the... It's very important to apply Vaseline to any places that could be embedded in the plaster to keep it from sticking. The final product looks as if you sculpted your face out of stone or something. I thought it'd be fun. It'd be an experience. It'd be a different art form. Okay. Because he's going to be under the plaster for roughly 15 minutes, we need to provide for free breathing during that period. Breathing comfortably, are you? No, we're ready. It's going to be a little bit cool. Raise your left hand if you need anything. I'm going to do the eyes, so keep them closed. That's when it gets a little scary, just because you're going to be in there for 15 minutes, and the psychological part of it is, is pretty tough. If you're claustrophobic, it's not good at all. <laughs> you all right? Are you okay? All right, all right. This will start setting up in just a few minutes now. Okay, Dan, I think we can take this off now. When the mask was set, we began to lift the mask off gently. What is it? What is it? It's stuck. What's the matter? Hold on. What? It's Hold on. It's stuck. Where? Stuck my... We said, well, where's it stuck? And he says, my forehead. It's stuck on my forehead. I'm going to lift just a little bit. The mask normally lifts off very easily, but in Eric's words, he felt like his whole scalp was going to come off. High school senior Kathy Long, who was taking classes at the college, happened to be passing by. I noticed some commotion, and I heard, stop, that hurts, don't do that, quit, it's not coming off. We're going to sit you up, Eric. And I realized that he was stuck. At the time, Kathy was training to be an EMT. I thought, maybe there's something I can do, but EMT training covers none of this. I wish. <laughs> you okay? Here, try to bend forward and it might come off. Let me try. Okay. No, no, it's not. I thought it was kind of humorous, but of course at that time I thought, you know, it stuck to his hair, but we'll get it off. No big deal. It didn't turn out that way. I said, you're going to look real good in the flat top. Girls may even like this mask, and you may even look better with it on. Okay, no, straight down. No. Straight down. I think he thought it was funny the first time. I don't think he thought it was funny later. And I thought, if they don't get this off, it's really going to ruin his social life. <laughs> really seriously. I just want to look down in here for a minute. As he started getting further down, I realized that, you know, it's not hair anymore. It's, it's got to be stuck to the skin. Hey, what are you doing? I was literally sweating because I felt responsible. I'm sorry. That's a big chunk. Eric did not want the mask broken. After the first 45 minutes, he said, I want this thing. I've gone through too much agony and pain to lose it, and I need one for my art class. And Mr. McClellan's like, well, I'll excuse you on this one. He's like, no, I want it. <laughs> When music teacher Lisette Deemer spotted the group, her curiosity got the better of her. Jim was using some kind of ceramic tool that looked like a teeny-weeny spade. It must have been uncomfortable because Eric was saying, let somebody else work for a while. So I wound up doing some of the chipping. Well, I don't think we're going to make much progress this way. There was a little bit of a space between the hair and the cast. Let's try an X-Acto knife. Maybe we can... That's really scary when you think how sharp an X-Acto knife is. So I didn't want to proceed with that for very long. Just, you need to hold still, okay? We'll be real careful here. Just going to try and kind of slice the hair away from you. Be careful. It wasn't going too well. It seemed impossible. It was stuck completely across. What about some water? Okay, here comes water. Pour some right on the mask itself. Is that helping? No, I don't think it's helping. Let's try some cooking oil or something. Oh, all right. That's plenty of oil. Oh, man. Well, how about liquid soap? Okay. Everybody 
had an opinion. Everyone had an, some advice to give. You know, everyone had a solution. Of course, none of it worked. Uh, Morgan? No. There was more than once that I thought to myself, boy, wouldn't I just love to just yank this off? It, it wouldn't kill him. <laughs> One, two, three. It's not working. But let's, let's try something else. A call for assistance brought a Lincoln Fire Engine Company to the scene. I was not aware that 911 had been called. And all of a sudden, firemen showed up. And I was just thinking to myself, what are firemen? I mean, what are they going to do, hose him down? I mean, I didn't know what they could do for him. Captain Gary Keene assessed the situation. They did a good job of plastering him. It looked pretty awesome, and the, the amount of plaster was on his face, and a straw was sticking out there. He seems to be breathing fine. His color looks good. Um, when I pull it away, it is still stuck to his skin. And they wanted to know if we could remove the mask with some magic instrument, which they apparently thought we carried, which we don't. If we try to work on this, we could probably injure him more than anything else. So we advised him that the best thing to do would be to take him to the hospital and have it uh, removed with a uh, plaster saw. I was not about to do that. I was not going to sit in a hospital emergency room with 10 pounds of plaster for who knows how long. What about the dentist? They've got to have some kind of small tools or something you could use. The dentist's office. This was a little less embarrassment than a hospital. Smaller office, less people. This is okay. Oh, oh Eric, are you all right? I was very conscious of the patients that are sitting in the lobby there. Oh, what happened? So I was like, oh, I'm glad this is on my face. At least I can't see them, they can't see my face. Orthodontist Ralph Dwornick had no idea just how well he knew the young man hiding underneath 10 pounds of plaster. This, this Eric? Yes, this is Eric. It was definitely on my mind the fact that I had just broken up with the orthodontist daughter. I was not thrilled by that fact at all to be going to this guy with all these sharp tools and instruments and this big thing on my face. I didn't even know if he'd help me. It almost looked like it had melted right into his forehead. It was basically just almost a tenth of a millimeter time because you didn't know are you going to be wounding him or not. We started dissecting it away from his forehead uh, at the highest point and working down towards his eyes. That's it right there. I just was like, man, this is never going to come off. What's going on? I was holding on to it the whole time, and all of a sudden, boom, it fell free, and I had it in my hand. Boy, I talk about a sigh of relief. <laughs> and I just kind of laid there, glad to be out and be breathing some fresh air. I had a nice big swollen rectangle with the plaster had pulled, and I had big chunks of plaster in my hair. But other than that, there were no permanent scars or any permanent damage done. In the two years since that day, Eric has not managed to live down the incident. Most everybody heard about it, and a couple of kids in one of my classes demonstrated their version of it, and I just had to sit there just laugh. It was hilarious to see them do this. I'm glad it didn't scar him for life. If it had, I'd, been, I'd, I'd be a little more ashamed of, of teasing him, but he teases me enough, so he deserved it. On the other hand, he may have gotten a lot of sympathy. I imagine he had a lot of sympathetic women around him. Oh, Eric, did it hurt? Was it terrible? <laughs> In the classes that I teach, I always try to bring this up. I try to let people everywhere know that music is very safe for all students of all ages. <laughs> I don't know if I've learned anything that really made me a better artist from it other than research the material you're going to be using a little bit more before you start using it. All, our, all artists suffer for their art sometime in their career. Eric just happened to do it a little sooner than anyone had expected. Next. To see your child so helpless and to know that your stupid mistake did this. I lost it. Somebody help me! 